Hey, 2.3, the Catholic Reformation. What? Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, 2.3, the Catholic Reformation. Uh, so, we have talked a lot in the first two sections of Unit 2 about how the church is under attack from the Protestants, or those Christians who are protesting the acts of the church. Uh, now we're going to see what this, the Catholic Church do about trying to get a lot of those people who had left the church uh, to come back. So a couple different strategies. I might have to move. Maisie is here in the jungle making a lot of noise. So let's just scoot down the kitchen here a little bit. Okay. All right. Uh... On the menu, what were the causes and effects of the Catholic Reformation, the overall goals of the Council of Trent and the Jesuits, and how does Baroque art fit in with the mission of the Catholic Reformation? So, first of all, what is the Catholic Reformation? It is a movement to address issues in the church and try to bring people back after they leave uh, for the Protestant church. So... Uh, you probably can put the mid-16th century or the 1500s, mid-1500s, uh, for this movement because it's primarily a reaction to the events that start in 1517 with Martin Luther. It's first led by this very tired-looking gentleman here on your right, Pope Paul III, in which he is seeking to ch change the practices of the church and not the teachings. So it's what the church does, it's not what the church does. Teaches. So if you go back and you look at Luther and Calvin's ideology, uh, Anabaptist, we looked at a little bit. Those are different teachings uh, under the bigger web of Christianity. Uh, what the church wants to do here is to change how they are perceived, not what they teach. And this will cement, this is important, it's going to cement the widespread division in Christianity. And again, it will totally destroy uh, Charles V's goal of uniting a Catholic Europe because you're basically going to have the division of belief because of it. So let's talk about the Council of Trent. It's a series of meetings in the Catholic Church uh, in the Italian city of, you wait for it, you guessed it, Trent, in which they wanted to decide the church's future. So the reason why Trent's important is what the dis was decided there. Uh, and, and again, it affirms doctrine, it affirms the teachings, will change the practice. So, for example, Scripture plus church traditions, good works. Uh, good works. That continues in terms of uh, how you get to heaven, your salvation. What should be taught in the church? Scripture and the traditions of the church. So, understand, like, the church teachings is what's taught. Salvation is, again, how to get to heaven. So, good works plus faith. All that's the same. The church interprets the Bible. The church structure with the priest is important. So, the people cannot interpret the Bible for themselves. So this is an anti-Renaissance, anti-individualistic philosophy. Uh, it's best as the church begins to look at and looks at what is in the Bible and interprets it. And, and again, this is like the, the, these men, these priests have been to the seminaries. They learned. Uh, they probably know more of the context in a religious sense than Joe the peasant who picks up the German Bible on the street. So it's this, this philosophy, at least, is not without meaning. And the whole go to your priest and confess your sins still stays. What changes? The actions, Catholic Church Probs, hashtag, all of those are basically cleaned up. You do not sell indulgences. You do not sell church offices. Uh, and the moral decay, which we had discussed with Alexander VI and the, quote, parties that he uh, hosted, all of those things are basically cleaned up. So again, Council of Trent, the beliefs stay, but the practices change. Now, concurrently with Trent is this group of Catholics called the Jesuits. And this is a term you will still see today. They're known as the Society of Jesus. They're led by a man named Ignatius Loyola, who was basically a Spanish troop, a uh, Spanish soldier uh, who prayed for his deliverance from uh, military battle uh, and said, if, if you, God, if you allow me to get through this, then I will, you know, go out and be ultra-Catholic and fight uh, for the Catholic Church, and that is exactly what he did. Now, if we look at the Jesuit order, again, it's a group of priests in the Catholic Church. What do they want to do? They're building schools to teach 
uh, the Catholic teaching of Jesus. So again, Catholic education by then spreading the Catholic faith, faith and also stopping in what they saw as the evil or heretical, heretic Protestants. They're organized in a military fashion. So this is a very militaristic organization. They know themselves as the soldiers for Christ. So they're going to be very extreme and severe in trying to accomplish their goals. And a good example of that is that in many cases, the Jesuits were the leaders of the Spanish and Italian Inquisitions. Again, we saw this with Ferdinand and Isabella in Spain. It's basically quality control. Just getting out of here over there. Quality control for the Catholic Church. How do you ensure in your area that these Protestant beliefs stay out? You basically uh, strike fear into those who might think differently. So uh, in, in sort of a judicial setup, a court setup, you put people on trial who might be showing uh, actions that aren't quite Catholic. Think if they were a Jewish man who converted to Catholicism, if, say, this newly minty Catholic avoided pork, uh, that might arouse suspicion inside of the Inquisition that this man may not be doing what? That they may not be doing things that are truly Catholic. Again, Galileo, remember we talked about him and how he was put on trial in the Inquisition. Uh, the Inquisition, of course, the Galileo we saw was just a very civil trial. The Inquisition, uh, man, I'm trying to do a podcast. Someone's teething, and she thinks that she can make all the noise that she wants. In any case, uh, one of the darker sides of the Inquisition is that they did engage in certain tactics, which, let's say, were not quite civil. This is called the wheel in which your body was literally stretched and heat was added uh, to, to, again, to encourage the proper behavior. This is called the bull. And basically, you are a brass bull. You're placed inside the hollow chamber of this bull. And it, it, Maisie's laughing at the bull. It's not good. And they would place fire under the bull to basically cook you alive. And through, as you can see, uh, the vent at the nose, smoke would come out. It's a horrible thing. Now, I'll tell you what. Just to ensure we make our final points here, I'm going to come over here because Maisie is so black. Okay, so, uh, yeah, it's it's not great. Now, another thing the church would do that would be less tortury, uh, and, and to be fair, the church and the Inquisition are not the only ones who employ these kind of tactics. Uh Basically, anyone is in, engaged in getting information or to encourage or discourage certain behavior would engage in such tactics. That's just common to the time. More on that later. Uh, the church also would, in very Renaissance style, commission artists. I'm going to go even farther. Someone has to be loud. Uh, they would commission artists to basically say, okay, I'm going to create a work of art that tries to convey to you how important the Catholic faith is. And this is the beginning of what we call Baroque art. And Baroque art is different from Renaissance art in, in, in its appearance for the... I'm sorry, she is so loud for the reason that uh, it was used for a specific purpose. Usually the show the glory and the majesty of whoever is paying for that art to take place. So the Baroque uh, in, in the early and late 16th century, uh, certainly you'd see a lot of very full... Hold on one second. Huh. Okay, we're back. So this art would be used basically to show the glory of... The church. You'd also see kind of artistic techniques uh, that Baroque art features very fleshy bodies. Note, there's a lot of skin happening here. So again, the point is, if you see this painting, it reflects the church's spiritual glory, and the thought is that someone would be visually overwhelmed. And again, we talked about how this is not a very visual society. You see things like that, it's completely new. So we'll touch on that a little more as we go forward. Remember the menu causes and effects of the Catholic Reformation, the overall goals of the 
Council of Trenton Jesuits and Baruch Hart. See ya!